Hello everyone, and I'm the writer, and we're back with Dual Destinies! What? I believe I've never seen you- I've seen you in the newspapers before! Of course you have, of course you have, for I'm Yuri Cosmos, director of the Cosmos Space Center, which was, of course, named after me, Yuri Cosmos! I doubt it. You have anything you wish to ask me? Looks like he's all geared up to do some bragging! Seven years ago, I successfully launched the Hat One in. Oh, thank God, Simon, you exist. Thank you. Everyone already knows how brilliant you are. Even I am trying to hold back my tears at seeing such a great man standing before me. So could you please proceed directly to your important testimony? Ah, I see this fine young lad has a proper appreciation of greatness. And allow me to begin my epochal testimony that will be recorded in the M Annals of History. That speech of Rossi about you just now, it sounded more like he was poking fun at Director Cosmos. It prob it's probably for the best that it sailed right over the director's head. Now then, Director Cosmos, the condensed version of your illustrious testimony, please. Please, for the love of God. Oh, I can't handle this. Alright. Detective Arm and I rushed towards the boarding lounge together. We went to behind the control room and peeked in from where from there to see what was going on inside. We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge and Terran lying on the floor. I hate to say it. I can only imagine the standing figure must have been Starbuck. <sighs> wow! Hmm, I see. So in your testimony, you claim... You arrived at the scene as if the two had escaped from the launch pad to the lounge, and just after the victim had been killed. Oh, the horror, the humanity, but what I said is what I saw, and what I saw is what I said. Courageous actions to take in the forest such a terrifying explosion, wouldn't you say? To save my men, I went personally into the empty center of danger, risking my own life for theirs. Ha 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 ha. Well, what do you know? It sounds like the director really cares about his men. Yeah, although it sounds more like he was scared and just had a peek from far away. Is the defense ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Director Cosmo's testimony is pretty vague. I'm gonna have to press him and draw out more information before I do anything else. Oh boy. Aura Black will also saw a suspicious figure in the lounge. She but she gave the statement that it was too dark to see the person's face clearly. Did you see the figure's face clearly? No, not clearly. The lights, the lighter they were holding illuminated the area around their feet at the time, but other than that I could see little else. That's why I could see Terran, but I couldn't see who the other person was. So, for all you know, it might not have been Mr. Starbuck, isn't that correct? I would like to believe that. Starbuck isn't the type of man who is capable of murder. When the witness entered the boarding lounge, there was no third person there. Isn't that correct, Great Space Center Director? Yes, that's right. Only Starbuck and Terran were there, were there by, the by that time. After we peeked in, the lounge was suddenly went dark, and the figure vanished. Do you mean they disappeared? That's odd. The reason the figure appeared to vanish is because it was the defendant. When the witnesses weren't looking, he fell to the floor and fanged in consciousness. Hold on, Director Cosmos, did you ever take your eyes off the scene? Just for a bit, but uh, about as long as it takes for a shooting star to go by. If you took your eyes off the scene, then this third person could have escaped during that time. But what escape route could this person have used? The director's opposite uh, the control room was up the norm to the elevators. Ugh, I'm sorry, my words. There's no security lock on that door, so it would have been possible to escape that way. All things are possible, right, Dono? The real question is, do you 
you have any proof. Oh, well. If we are just talking possibilities, we could have. We could each profess whatever we like. An inmate used to, who used to be a university professor and a lunar researcher used to say that there is a kingdom of little green men who live under the surface of the moon. As long as they don't punish us in the name of the said moon or whatever we've done to do it. <laughs> ah, that's nice. I'm, I'm a Sailor Moon fan. But I say, where's your proof that this quaint kingdom exists? He's calling your theory a work of fiction, boss. He's right, I don't have any proof yet. Still. The southern road was a possible escape route. I better make a man that's a lot of that. Mr. Cosmos, may I ask you a question? Yes. Why did you look away from the boarding lounge? Ha ha ha! There's actually another tale of bravery behind the answer to that. It was when Directive Army saw the figure and raised her gun. Being a great humanitarian and protector of mankind, I tried to stop her. What? You're saying Detective Army raised her gun as soon as she saw the figure? I imagine her instincts as a detective told her they were the killer. Hmm. I don't know about that. And were you able to prevent Detective Army from firing her gun? I'm afraid I was too late. I wasn't able to stop her. She had to divide herself clearly and then... She fired two warning shots at the shadowy figure. This information about Detective Army's actions sound critically important. Please add it to your testimony. Um, wow, this is so different from the Great Ace Attorney. Wait, oh shoot, no, I missed the wrong one. Ah, no. I am sorry, I messed up. Ah! It's literally was in the chat. Okay, wait, hold on. I thought they wanted me to- The bullet, they want the bullet- oh. Are you sure you're really paying attention to what Detective Army was doing? You doubt my words? Words are something we've written down in history books? Somehow I don't think though those exact words will ever be written down in any history book. Mr. Wright, could you please explain yourself so that we can all understand? You say that Detective Army fired two warning shots, and yet only one bullet hole was ever found at the scene. What? Only one bullet hole means the gun was only fired once, and yet Director Cosmos is saying Detective Army fired two shots. No editor would be it allow such a glaring contradiction into their history book. Unfortunately for you, the witness's words are true. Confirm that the two shots were fired from Detective Army's gun. But there was only one bullet hole at the scene. Where did the other bullet hole vanish to? Ah! I love that bird. You should know the answer to that already. I should. During this previous trial, a certain oxygen tank was presented as evidence. We already discussed that it, was that it was ruptured in the lounge, have we not? Well, it appears that the ruptured, will ruptured it was a bullet. A bullet that was near the tank, to be precise. This bullet was fired from a .38 caliber gun, the same caliber as the detective's gun. What?! <laughs> Abal, you should have mentioned this. The rifling marks also match up. There's no question that the bullet was fired from the detective army's gun. Oh. Rifling marks? They're like a gun's fingerprints as a bullet, correct? You've been through this, your honor! And examining the rifling marks on the bullet can tell us the gun was fired from. One of the bullets the detective fired found its way into the holographic image display. The other bullet came to stop near the victim's oxygen tank. The evidence confirms the director's statement and that the detective fired two shots. My beautiful contradiction. Gone. All gone. So that bullet hole was from a .38 caliber, huh? I better update the record. Well, okay. Very good. Now we know that the fate of both the shots detective already fired. Mr. Wright, does this clear up all of your questions? 
Hmm. Detective Rumby fired two warning shots. One hit the holograph display, and the other hit the oxygen tank. Does that really clear up everything about what happened at the scene? No. No, Your Honor. It doesn't! Detective Army fired two warning shots from a .38 caliber gun. But that doesn't explain the existence of a certain piece of evidence found at the scene. A piece that points to the existence of a third person. Oh. Very well, but it won't do... It, it won't do... To keep us waiting, Mr. Wright. What piece of evidence suggests that possibly a third person was at the scene? Oh. And was the what is this metal pellet supposed to be? Just a little something of a great importance we found at the crime scene, Your Honor. You found it where? Ooh. In a floor gutter at the crime scene. It looks like the police and the prosecution both missed it. Furthermore, this is a point ten caliber bullet, making it much smaller than the one Detective Army's point three thirty eight calibers. Then that means. <clears throat> Exactly. One more person must have been there in the lounge. And a third person who had a gun could fire a .10 caliber bullet! <sighs> Look, I know we all hate that Phoenix came back like this, but this theme's a bop and a beautiful one. And if that's true, it explains why Detective Army fired warning shots. This third person fired at Detective Army and Director Cosmos with their gun, and in return the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Aha! It looks like you've deduced my miraculous tale of survival! Yes, you're absolutely correct. The mysterious person fired upon us. You're going to jail for lying in a court of law. What is this now? What? You've never breathed a word of this to me before! Aha! Well, all great men have a secret to too, don't you know? You gonna let that slide? Tsk, foolish old geezer. So Director Cosmos really has been hiding all per the presence of a third person all along. Director Cosmos, I want you to testify to the court about what you really saw. You may be a very great man, but in a courtroom you are just another witness. You won't receive special treatment here. Now please give us accurate testimony. Ah, oh, God, this man. Detective Arm and I rushed to the control room together. In the lounge, we saw a figure standing in the middle of the room and tearing on the floor. We were still in the control room to the east when the figure fired at us. Great. Mm, given that there was no third person in the lounge when the witness entered it, does this mean that the person who fired the gun had to have been the defendant? No, someone could have fired back. Not necessarily. It's possible that it was someone else. Most likely, as soon as Director Army and Director Co Detective Army and Director Cosmos discovered this person, they escaped through the southern door and that one didn't, that didn't have a security lock. Oh, come on, buddy, let me win. Double-edged swords are a trickery lot. This had other than one, and it's you who was cut down. Huh? Your reasoning could apply if Space Boy were the killer as well. Think about it. After being discovered, he could have fired a .10 caliber gun. Detective Army would have surprised, responded by firing two warning shots. All he had to do was stay on consciousness to invert the possibility of a third person. Well then, where'd the gun go? But Mr. Starbuck didn't have a gun in his possession when he was found by the police. Nor has their gun been found at the crime scene. It's obscene. It's obscene. Its absence, that looked like an O from a distance, can only be explained if there was a third party who took it with them. Recall the existence of a trash chute in the boarding lounge? The defendant could have simply thrown the gun down the chute. Well, did you find a gun? But you can't deny the possibility of a third person leaving the weapon. This is a tennis match. It's up to you to prove the po that possibility. And I trust you haven't forgotten my little piece of decisive evidence. On evidence. Why the detonator switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket naturally? The most compelling evidence of all that tells us he is the culprit. Ah! I did forget all about that! Oh, thanks, Phoenix. Whoops, did not mean to hit that. Look at- look, your bonnet, how deliciously ob obvious it is that they lack the evidence to rival mine! 
Wow, he sliced our third person theory to ribbons and served it to us. Just like that. Yes, well, I have a question of my own, actually. That the bullet that the mysterious figure shot, what did it hit exactly? It hit me. Oh, sh- So does that mean you're a ghost? No. I was wondering when you would realize it, your baldness. Director Cosmos is an authentic, bona fide ghost. He can even pass through the walls. <laughs> oh, come on, Your Honor. Your Honor. Prosecutor Blackwell, shame on you for teasing the nice old gentleman. <laughs> your baldness was all unjust. Please show yourself again. Are you sure? In that case, how did you manage to survive being shot, Director Cosmos? Aha! I'm glad you asked. It was a miracle, a miracle befitting a great history-making figure such as myself. The bullet hit my glorious Medal of Honor where it ricocheted, thus saving my life. Oh my god. What? I don't believe this utter nonsense. Neither do I, Fina. That's unbelievable. You survived a lot worse. I have to check this out. Oh wow. Look, look at that. There's one extra galaxy star. The odds are literally astronomical. I guess it really was a miracle. It's beginning to feel like it though, where Cosmos is watching out for Director Cosmos. But why did you conceal this information, Director Cosmos? A great man as myself has high hide things on occasion, no matter how much it hurts. It is the plight of a truly great, it may be hard for this generation to understand. I don't know, but it sounds fishy to me. What else is he hiding? Let's just cross-examine and see what we can find out. Now then, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Oh boy, I do not like this witness. Again, still missed opportunity, it wasn't Clay. They missed a lot of good opportunities with this one. Now then, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Right. Director Cosmos, I believe you're the one telling this great court a glorious lie. Great men like me tell a lie? Have you ever heard of such a thing in all of history? Yes. My accusation is based on the position of the people who were in the lounge. According to your testimony, you and Detective Army were near the control room door, and the mystery figure was standing in the middle of the boarding lounge. If, as you say, the figure had fired a gun at you from this position, then the bullet would have traveled in that direction. However, we found point the found the point ten caliber bullet here. Oh, the trajectory and where the bullet was actually found contradict each other. Director Cosmos, where were you when you were really? Where were you really when the when you were being shot at? Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the human merry-go-round. Oh, hi. Don't tell me you've forgotten already. Didn't the witness himself just tell you? The bullet hit his metal. Of this, there is no mistake. Objection! But in that case, the bullet should have been found near the east side of the room. Are you trying to say that you can explain this inconsistency? Of course. Oh, I didn't think so. What?! <laughs> Oh, great director Cosmos. Yes? Is there something you would like to expand upon? You were in the fa you were in fact not in the control room in the east, were you? You were looking into the lounge from the door in the south, is that not right? Ah! What are you getting at? Use your own brain. Your head must have some other use than housing the b bird's nest. Bird's nest? Why does everyone pick on my hair? 
Director calls us and the detective witnessed the scene from the southern door. The killer fired at them there, and that is why the bullet is found in the south. Ah, that makes sense, actually. <laughs> also, the witness being at the southern door is rather favorable for the prosecution. Huh? I've got a bad feeling about this. However, how about it, Director? If you don't tell the truth this time... Oh. Yikes! He's so handcuffs! You will, you will become the rest upon... But the rest upon my sword. I relish the chance to cut down a great man. Alright, I'll tell the truth. Just put that sword away. You are correct. I, the great Yuri Cosmos... was looking in the room for the southern door. What? That's the completely opposite of all the testimonies given so far. And now you have your last possibility that the third person was in the room. I have? How? The director and the director detective were near the southern door. Meaning that the killer couldn't have escaped through there. The, waste, the western door required print recognition. The corridor beyond was filled with smoke. The only escape route left was the eastern control room door. And the only way to get through that there was Director Cosmos' fingerprints. Ack! In short, there would have been no escape for any third person had there been one. Ah! My third person just disappeared, like in one of Trissy's magic tricks! Order, order in the courts! Director Cosmos, why did you tell such an outrageous lie? You are covering for the defendant. Isn't that right? Yes, it was all for the love of the my men. If I said I was in the Eastern Control Room, it would mean that the culprit could have escaped the southern door. It would have been it would have meant that there could have been a third person. All I wanted to do was protect Starbuck. As I said, I was the control room to invent an escape route for a third person. What a convoluted lie. Is he really covering for the defendant? It looks like we've come to a conclusion. Not the defendant's argument, the possibility of a third person has crumbled. No! <laughs> it's over. Thanks. The judge is about to hand down his verdict. Think, Phoenix. Think! This is the perfect time to try and turn my thing around. If a third person had no way of escaping the scene, then what if one of the people at the scene was this third person? Wait! What if the whole premise is all wrong? Director Cosmo said that he and Detective Army rushed the scene together. But what if the premise isn't true? What if one of them reached the scene before the other one? And if that person entered the lounge, then they would be the third person! The defendant is the only one who could have killed the victim and shot the director. There doesn't seem to appear to be any room for argument against these claims. I will now render my verdict. Objection! Please wait, Your Honor. There is still one possibility. Oh, this had better be good, Mr. Wright. There is one and only one person who could have escaped the scene, and that person would be the first person who arrived on the scene. Then, upon entering the boarding lounge, the second person to arrive come, came via the southern door. That's why the first person fled from the room, using an escape route that was only accessible only to them. Very well, let's hear more about this theory. Who was the person you could have escaped to the boarding lounge? Uh... Take that! What? What? That's... Mr. Wright, what are you claiming here? Of all the people who were at the scene, on, oh, at the scene, only the witnesses could have escaped. The director's the only one with the authority over the control room door, after all. But, but... But that means... Exactly. The true identity of the third person is our current witness. Director Yuri Cosmos! Ah! 
What? What? Oh, Athena didn't see that coming. Order, order, in the court, I say. Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself in more detail. I assert that the director thought was arrived at the scene before Detective Army and entered the boarding lounge alone. Detective Army arrived after that and... Saw a suspicious figure who was actually Director Cosmo standing in the lounge. And that's why she fired those two warning shots. Ah, oh, I've been hit. I've been hit on the starboard side. Captain Wright is a direct hit on the enemy ship, sir. A magnificent shot. Warning shots fired from the enemy ship. Prepare to intercept. Cosmos, you have told a lie in this court once again. I've been hit! I've been hit on the port side! The enemy has come in reinforcements! Earth to Cosmo Control Center, requesting permission to ask that you return to reality. But my ship will not go down anything less than the ultimate weapon of evidence! Objection. But I do have evidence. In fact, you could say that your battleship bears its scar. No! <laughs> if Director Cosmos is the third person or a black was saw, this is the third person the fire that fired at Detective Army and Director Cogsworth with their guns, and in return the detective fired a warning shot. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? Aha! It looks like you've deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Yes, you're absolutely correct. The mysterious person fired upon us. And Director Cosmos must have been the one fired the .10 caliber gun. When Director Detective Army discovered him in the lounge, it only made sense that he would have turned and shot at her. Therefore, oh my god, he had a gun. The evidence on the director's body is of a different kind of relevance than before. Once we compare it against the other piece of evidence, the mark that you received from the third party will all be the proof we need to prove that you were the one in the lounge. <laughs> Breaks for further impact. Comparing against this piece of evidence will prove that you were the one in the lounge. Uh, the thirty, the point thirty-eight caliber bullet was found on the floor of the scene. Didn't hit the oxygen tank. It hit Director Cosmo's metal. If we made that, if if we have the ricochet mark on the metal analyst, I'm sure the caliber will match up. And if that mark proves to be from a point thirty-eight caliber bullet, it will prove that you are the third person we've been looking for. Gah! The bridge is destroyed, losing altitude, all hands abandoned ship! If that's true, then what about the bullet that hit the oxygen tank? It was the point teleport caliber bullet. In other words, it was the bullet fired by Yuri Cosmos. Isn't that right, Director? No, you've got it all wrong! What? The engines have been started again? It's a miracle! I'm not going down yet! Oh god in heaven. Witness, stop this at once and confess the truth! If you don't want the history book to say that a great man was a great liar... Then accept your fate and tell the truth! You giving me orders? Me, the great director of the Cosmos Space Center! Duh! The, the, the Cosmos revolves around me! How are you... alright, well... Ah, someone get me off this thing! <laughs> order, order in the court, and will someone please stop the witness from spinning? Oh boy, your honor, I didn't think that would happen anytime soon. Is he okay? He doesn't look okay, if you ask me. <sighs> Thank goodness we were able to stop him from spinning all over the face of the earth. While he was twirling, I took the liberty of running an analysis on the mark of the metal. It was made by a .38 caliber bullet, matching it with the size of the detective army's firearm. No. Are you ready to confess the truth, witness? No! You've got it all wrong! This is just a misunderstanding! Is he growing to start piling on more lies? It looks like it. But no matter how many lies he tells, I'll just expose them one by one. I'll make that big liar tell the truth! Oh, really? Is he- Oh, okay. I think that's actually a good place to stop, then. 
uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Be sure to subscribe and have a wonderful day. Bye.